These are the colors we are using for the background. This is Prussian blue. This is Plaid Folk Art Multi-Surface Prussian blue. And if you can't find these in your local craft store, look at Plaid Online. You can purchase directly from the company if you need to. Uh, Wicker White is this one here. And these two, I was playing with a sandy color. One is linen and the other is vintage white. I kind of liked the um, sheen, not the sheen, I guess the tone that they gave it. So here is the practice piece. This is my, oh, I have it. I was making it into a journal. Sorry, I can't see the cover, but it is a multimedia pad and I'll link it uh, in the blog post that goes with this so that you can find them yourself. You can also find these at Michael's. This is the multimedia pad. Um, I practice things on it or I test things. Like here, I wanted to see what the background color would turn out to be when I blended it with other colors. Down here is where I did the linen or the warm or the vintage white appears with the white. So you can pick which one you want. You can test it out. Pick what you want. I'm kind of going to add both and I'm gonna work it into my painting. I was just gonna show you some other things. This is where I, you know, I did practice sessions for doing jars, um, some morning glories, and the butterfly that I did a, a lesson on here. I'm learning to draw, so I was drawing daffodils. So cherries, so I just wanted to know how I utilize this, my nephew was drawing for me, um, pad. So I just test out designs, etc., on it and it all works great. The, it is a little bit dry, so if I did the design on here, it would drag and it could be frustrating for you to try to do that. So if you decide to do your practice piece on the paper, just know there will be some drag, uh, but that's not a big deal. You could still go through the motions of these strokes. So I have my icky towel over here that I wipe my brushes on. You can use paper towels. And this is just a palette paper. I've used um, pieces of glass. I have a white enamelware tray that I like to use, but it, it glares so much into the camera, it kind of makes things dark. So I can't use it here. Let me show you what that looks like. This one's a large one. You can get them smaller size that are more compact for you. But it really comes in handy for painting with. Yeah, you see how the lights reflect in it and can be a little glaring, but um, I like this. It washes up really nice. And you don't have to use palette paper, which I use a lot of times as the palette paper, but if you don't want to have to have something disposable like that. So let's get started. I have my colors on my palette paper. Um, typically with a large, with the backgrounds, I like to use this large brush, but these are getting harder to come by. Plaid Online has these. I, this is low Cornell, but I just was pricing these on Amazon where I got this one and it was like $15 for the three pack. Well, this is just a crappy little, you know, craft brush. I paid $5 for the set. So I'm not gonna pay 15, 18, cause somebody's price gouging on Amazon. Um, so I'm sure the ones at Plaid Online are perfectly fine and they are like $4.99, $5.99 and then the shipping. If you order paint from them, go ahead and order some of these brushes cause I just love them. I am gonna keep watching on Amazon to see if they you know, bring the price down where it's reasonable again. So that being said, the, the brushes that I'm gonna be using because they're easily available for you are the Donna Dewberry One Stroke. I link to the 10 pack. I also have this pretty one set that she has out. Let me see, it comes with these. I just got these for fun. Um, and I think this is $35 for this set. These are normally $15 for the set. We're gonna use the quarter inch to do our background brush today. And this canvas has been gessoed. It's also been sitting around getting kicked around, so it's a little stained, but the background colors will cover that up. So I dampened my brush. I guess I should show you. I dampened my brush in clean water, and then I just kind of pat it off on the towel so it's not dripping. So I'm gonna get, I probably need a lot more of my Prussian blue since I used up all my practice. And I probably will need both more of the wicker white and 
the other colors too. Like I said, the other colors totally optional. I just like the, to tone it down in some areas myself for a little more interest. We don't want to make it hard. Just go with the white, go with just a vintage white, etc. You can also, the background color doesn't have to be the Prussian blue. In my original, it was burnt umber and a linen in the warm white or something to that effect. Okay, so damp brush, gessoed canvas that's dry, and my paint. So I'm going to start by loading with just a little bit of the Prussian blue and a tiny bit of the white because I want the outside corners to be darker. And you know, I'm just laying that paint on there. Now you can add more white as you're coming down. If I want to add a touch of linen, I do. I want this up here darker, so I'm just going to go back into only the blue when I touch that. I will go th around the edges a little bit because I want the edges to be done. That way I, I won't have to frame this if I don't want to. It can sit on the edge of a shelf, not edge of a shelf, but on the shelf. And if you're not getting the coverage, uh, and that will happen if you didn't just so, um, then you can come back once it's dry. Remember not to overwork it. I want this to blend in, so I'm blending it down into it. I'm going to go with this side. Uh-oh, I'm flinging paint now. Don't fling paint. Like I said, I'm used to doing a bigger brush, so I have broader strokes. Just blend it on together. You want it light, going lighter. Is it going to the center? can add a little per, uh, linen over here to make this a little toned down. And just enjoy feeling the paint flow. It's such a satisfying, it's like frosting a cake almost. Just doesn't taste as good, that's for sure. So I got some of the vintage white on my brush. And I'm trying to work from corner to corner. Just lay that paint in there. If you get it too dark in the center, you can just bring back in some more of the lighter, one of the lighter colors. If you get the edges too light, I mean the corners over here, then just go back over it with a darker blue. Now sometimes I'll put it up on blocks just so I can get around the edges without getting the paint on my protective cover. Okay, so I'm going to deepen the color along the edges. Tiny bit. Don't flick your brush. It's also good to wear an apron if you got it. I haven't messed up too many clothes, but you can. You can mess up some clothing by not protecting it. And there's no perfection in this because it's just the background. It's not the star of the show. This is just going to be an interesting background for your rooster. Now as we progress, not on this painting, but later on in some tutorials, we'll do a background for our, for our rooster, like have him sitting on a fence or have a barn in the background. You could also, if you didn't want this type of background, you could um, paint a faux wood. I have a tutorial on how to do faux wood here on YouTube and on my website that you could use as the backdrop for him. It would be really nice too. And we can do a second rooster another time with the barnwood background. Okay, so if you're liking the way it's looking, then leave it be. Just go over it and see if there's anything you want to fix. Like maybe some canvas showing through. If your paint starts to lift, it's time to stop, walk away, and let it dry because um, you'll just end up making a mess. Now don't start in the middle. You see how there's a chunk there? Um, 
if that was not going to be covered by the rooster, that would really show up and not be pleasing unless you're going for that kind of look. All right, we are good here. We're gonna leave this to dry and that is our background. So here's our transfer or our pattern that we're going to transfer. And I'm just gonna line up um, to the edge. I didn't want it directly in the middle. I wanted him kind of to one side. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I have some painter's tape. This is edge lock blue. I also use um, frog tape, etc. I'm just gonna tape it down so it doesn't move. For him, I'm gonna use white uh, transfer paper. This is graphite paper, and I have it listed on my frequently used tools on my website because I do use it when I'm transferring patterns. You notice it doesn't come all the way down. I'm gonna move it. That's what helps the, with the tape being there. That way the pattern doesn't move when I am working on transferring to my surface. So let me get a pen. I like using ballpoint pens. They seem to transfer better than a stylus for me. Now this is a, the canvas moves. It's flexible. So what I do is I get a board. This one's covered because I was painting on it, but I get a board and I put underneath of it and it raises it a bit and makes it firmer so that I can really have a firm touch when I transfer my pattern. Now, I reuse my graphite paper over and over and over. Eventually it starts to wear out and it doesn't transfer very well. This one is doing quite well. So I'm pleased with that. Very pleased with that. So we can keep on going. Now, um, you notice I'm not right directly on the lines. I'm not being perfect because for me, these are guidelines and not like something I have to follow exactly. So, and when we get to painting that, you'll notice I'm not painting exactly on these lines. Making sure my board is still under there. I'm just giving it a good pressure. You could use the black graphite but um, with colors like red and other lighter colors, you just can't um, seem to disguise the black line. So I would have to go very, very lightly with it, which would have a harder time showing on the blue. Um, so that's why I like the white on darker surfaces. It just for me works better. and is easier to then obscure. Sometimes I lose my place when I'm yakking of where I have been, so I have to raise it, especially if I've used the pattern over and over because I've already got lines on it. If I hadn't already used it, I could see where I had drawn my lines, but it's all good because we can continue on. This one needs to move over a little bit. So it's underneath here. Okay, I'll move it down a little bit more. Let me see what I've got going here. So there's my basic outline of my rooster. It works pretty good. Okay, so how long did that take? Not very long at all. And then you can come back and then add in our colors. So that step is done. Here is something I failed to relate and I'm gonna catch up here. You can see we already started other things, but ignore that. Right here, I missed part of my design and when I do my transfers, I'll print out a pattern and then I'll do it on this tracing paper. This one I got, uh, and it's Crayola tracing paper. This is the 
the um, same size as printer paper, so it works perfectly for when I'm doing designs, and that way I can easily translate it to um, printer paper. So I'm just gonna put this on here, and I can see my design through here. Now it's not exact, and that's okay, but I can get kind of very, very close. And I can go in and I can put that section in that I somehow missed when I was transferring the design, probably because I was more focused on videoing than I was on transferring. So it's just this little portion. Yes, I could draw it in. I was just showing you, if you're not comfortable drawing it in, how you can go in and add something you've missed if you discover you have. And let me see if everything else is on there. Yes. Now it doesn't match up perfectly. That's all right. It's all going to come in together as we paint it. But I just wanted to show you that little trick. Hi, and welcome back to our rooster painting in 10, 20, 30 minutes or less. So we did the gessoing of the canvas. We put on our background for our rooster painting and we've traced on the pattern or the rooster outline. You can draw it in, hand draw it in if you wish. No problem there, but this is where we should be. Now we're gonna paint some of the reds. Reds are not opaque many times, most of the time. Therefore, we're gonna do several coats. And since this is on a darker background, um, then I'm thinking I may undercoat a little bit with white. That way uh, it keeps the reds a bit brighter for you. So let's go ahead and get painting our first layer of reds and or undercoat. So I haven't decided yet. Sometimes adding yellow ochre to red, like the first coat can uh, make it a little more opaque. So we may try that. So let's get painting our reds and maybe I'll include include some of the yellows, like the legs are a yellow ochre and things like that. So I'm gonna point my camera down at my painting surface or painting table and we'll get to painting our rooster, finally. So let's get started on our rooster. We're going to do his comb, his waddle, and this little ear bud thing, and his legs. The colors I have on my palette are engine red, cardinal red, I was just putting out some red, so you can use whichever one you like the white, wicker white, and um, they're all plaid folk art colors. So if you have other paints, use whatever reds you want. This is not rocket science, and you don't have to use exactly the same thing I do. I had said I was going to, um, let me get this over here a little bit so I can. I was going to maybe undercoat. So I'm gonna undercoat a portion and see if that's really gonna be necessary and I'm just following the lines I'm not being exact I'm just getting um, the perception of something now this little ear thing is white so I'm going to go ahead and put that in and you notice I went way over it not a big deal okay so the legs I'm going to just go ahead and draw them in in the white and then go over them Yellows and reds aren't opaque. I've already mentioned that before. And sometimes when you're going over a darker surface, it's easier to undercoat with white and then go over it with the less opaque colors. Sometimes yellow ochre will make um, your reds a little bit more opaque without super changing the color, just for an undercoat, because we're gonna have to do a few coats for the reds in our uh, rooster. I'm getting some of the Cardinal Red on my brush just to see how it's gonna look with the blue. And you can see the blue tone is coming through and that's not really something I wanted. So I may go ahead and undercoat. Let me see if I can do this with a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. This is something you can decide ahead of time if you wanna undercoat with all the yellow ochre. with the red, or if you wanna do the white, and then try adding the yellow ochre to the next coat, let's see.
Now you see right there, I kind of went over this other jagged edge. Not a big deal. I could come in and reverse paint, use the blue to bring that back in if I want it. Or I can take my brush. Let me wipe it out. Excuse me, having to go in front of the camera. I couldn't find my boom arm. We have got some terrible traffic going around today. Lots of construction going on. And I can dampen my brush, my clean brush, and just pull up that paint. Pull it up. Pull it up. And it pulls it right out of there. So no big deal if I make an error. Just dampen a clean brush and fix it. All right, so this part of his face we are going to do with the red. I want to first put in the very center of his eye, the circular part, is a yellow ochre color. So I'm going to get that in there. So even if somehow I obscured the outside edge of his eye, then it would be already there and noticeable under the yellow. Also, I could get a um, liner brush and do the, the black uh, around it, but I'm not, I'm not going to. So the waddle here is going to be the engine red. Again, you could undercoat with the white. And if I'm not liking it once it dries, I will go back, undercoat with white, and then come back and do this. So... Just work around the eye as best you can. And fill in there. You don't want any big globs. So don't overload your paint on your brush. You're going to be able to see blue through it. Don't worry about that. You're going to come back later with more coats. And so that's the red there for now. I'm going to be able to compare once this dries whether or not I like the undercoated part or not. So we'll let that dry. So for the legs, that white is already dry. So I can come in, forgive me while I go rinse my brush. I can come in and do the legs, which are yellow ochre. Still staying with the 10, number 10 flat. I do most of my work with flat brushes. I've just never really had any need for a, an array of brushes, other, you know, different types, depending on the painting. I do the majority of my work with flat brushes, and it works well. And I've just found how to use them to get the different effects. Okay, you notice I went over into the blue because I'm not being super tidy here. I'm talking more than I'm paying attention and I just clean that edge up. Clean it up and we're all good. I'm going to put in some more of the reds like on the um, right here on his feathers up on the top and some down here. It'll get covered up with a lot of gold but I wanted that in there. It's easier or it's better to put some of your darks in or like the red, I wanted the red to show through the golden colors because he's a real pretty coppery uh, areas on this rooster. So while we were doing the reds, I'm going to continue on. I'll also do another second coat on here while I'm doing this. But first I'm going to get the reds in here. Now I'm loading my brush with Cardinal Red. I think I'm going to stick with the Cardinal Red for the reds on him. I tested out the engine and... I like the cardinal the best. Now I'm just getting on the very corner a touch of burnt umber. It'll just help add some shadows in these areas. Now remember this is going to be brought up and I'm using the chisel edge of my brush and I'm just laying in some spiky strokes. I will reload and I'm dragging some of the burnt umber. A lot of times the color in the back is going to be the predominant color. I just wanted some of that on there. I'm just going to load with Cardinal Red now. And I'm going up a layer. See, right here's a layer that I'm going up a layer. Now, like I said before, a lot of this will get covered later on down the road with more golden. The, the red will just shine through a touch. And 
and it's as if I'm layering feathers. You know how feathers at the bottom and they have a layer of feathers, layer of feathers on chickens. And I'm just laying in the areas that I think are going to have a lot of red in them underneath the golden color. Now this little perch down here patch is really red. In fact, it's, it's very dark, so I'm going to add a lot more burnt umber there. And I'm just going to fill that in right along there. Now this up here is very golden, so I think I'll leave that. Now this is going to get some more uh, different brown. I think I'm going to use a raw umber over it or find a, a coppery red to, to do that there. And then these are going to have some red in it or at least a, re a glow, a red glow coming through. So now these over here will need uh, to be done before I finish any of the others because the tail feathers sit under these small feathers here. So these are not going to get anything done with them. This down here is a golden. It has a little bit of red in it. So I'm going to go ahead and you see I'm following the shape with my spiky strokes. So there's that portion. Now I'm going to clean out my brush. Just clean out my brush. We've got this little hints of red in there and I'm going to Go over his waddle a little bit. That's the front part to deepen that red. Because, as I mentioned several times, I've got a little bead of water on there. Red is not opaque, so sometimes you really have to add the coats. Make a thin coats because that way you don't want big globs of paint in there. And I'll add just a hint, just a barely a touch of burnt umber and to kind of bring it around the edge to darken that edge. Not too much, just a touch. Now his comb, his comb, I may add a touch of orange to bring that color up a little, just to change the hue slightly, or the color slightly. And remember I did a little white under there. I really like the brightness of that. So I could go ahead and do white under all of it, but let's see how it does with just the cardinal. There's no one way to do things. It just, make get a feel for it. Um, if you wanna do a trial painting on a, um, multi-surface pad, multimedia pad, that's great. And then you can get a feel for the colors and how they're gonna play with each other and what you really wanna do. So I like the way the red brought that color up a little bit. Don't overwork it because it starts to lift the paint. And that will have to be good for now because um, it's just at a point where I could lift the paint, but that orange really brightened that red. And in fact, I wouldn't mind adding a bit of that orange to some of these areas too, to give it that really bright color. There's a lot of golden color up there. With that orange, it's going to be a kind of a really nice undercoat for the other feathers. I could go over this part again. This under here, which we'll um, put in, is actually a very blue-black. So I need to probably get my black out and add a lot of blue to it or get my blue out and add a touch of black to it. But that's for another segment. So there we have those reds incorporated in here. A little bit of orange. This is pure orange, by the way, on here. So when we add the golden color, they already have a really nice under color to glow through. 
And I think that is pretty much it. There might be a little touch of red up there. Now it's a good time. I could go over the legs again because the legs and the beak are both dry. And that was um, yellow ochre. Let's get into the bottom of the barrel on that one. So I just load it, bring it in. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly opaque. Remember their legs have, you know, some texture on them. So now we're going to have something on the bottom here. We don't know what yet, but something on the bottom that we don't have to do is feet. And if you feel better with a smaller brush in his beak area, you see I'm kind of making a little bit of a mess there, then feel free to do so. Me, I'll just come in and clean up my edges with a dampened brush. And there we have it. So there is doing the rooster's comb, wattle, a little bit of red on his hackles or his feathers, and the yellow ochre. So next part, we'll do the blacks of the tail and the body mixed with a touch of blue. So now we're going to do the blacks, his tail, his body, etc. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test how this is going to work for me. So I, I switched to a larger brush and I wanted to test my colors. Now, um, I would highly recommend this is one of those multimedia pads that, and I've showed you before that I do a lot of my practice in and they come in handy and it's nice that it's all together like this because you can save it and look back at your pieces or your painting practice. So let's get this going. Here I have my colors. This is the Prussian blue. This is true blue. These are all plaid folk art colors and licorice black. So I'm going to first start. I'm going to, because this is paper, I'm going to dip in my floating medium and I'm going to get double load the brush with the two colors, black and the true blue. And just to give it a test of how that's going to do for the feathers. Um, and I start on the chisel edge. The chisel edge is this sharp edge. You see it's nice, make a thin line if I did wanted to. And I'm trying to keep my hand out of the camera view. So when I start, usually I start out pointing up, but you can't see what I'm doing that way. So I'm going to put my, a little bit to the side and you pull it up on the chisel edge. You flatten it. You just press, 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 and then you pull it around. And I'm kind of twirling with my fingers as I go twirl and like that. So I think that blue is probably pretty good. And as you go along, I'm, I just now dipped a little bit in the Prussian blue, just to give it a little different tone. And I'll do the same. Now actually, well, this will work. So I'm going to go up again and just practicing. You notice how that Prussian blue is much darker and it blended in more. Now, as it dries, you will be able to see it, but I like the contrast of the true blue, I think better. As I told you, as you brush, you're going to get more of that black and it's going to obscure a lot of the blue, but the blue will come through. So no worries there. And we are going to, on our rooster, we are going to overlap, but I wanted you to see the motion of the stroke. Again, start on the chisel edge, up and down, and then you pull up and curve. Now I kept it more on the chisel edge there and just pulled it around. And that made a, a narrower feather. So you can vary your feathers that way. And we're just, if you wanna just go into, like pull in just a blue feather, tail feather, then I wiped out my brush. I did not wash it. I wiped it out and just go all true blue I didn't get that in the camera. I'm sorry. I did all true blue 
and then I dipped a little in the Prussian blue. You notice that? And then you can just go over, and that really gives you some blue in there on, but the black shows through, okay? So that's our tail feathers practice. Go ahead and practice until you feel comfortable, and then we'll move on to our painting. Okay, so we're gonna do his back feathers. And I'm gonna, I still have the blue, the two blues on the brush. So I'm just gonna dip the darker blue side into the black in, right now. I didn't clean my brush out, it just wasn't necessary. I got a little bit of blending or floating medium just to let it stroke smoothly. And I'm just gonna follow along the outline. Do not try to perfectly fill it. That's just an exercise in futility. Now this time I went into the Prussian blue and the true blue. The Prussian blue is pretty dark, so it's doing good in creating a dark area. And I'm making the same strokes. And you notice how the blend of colors is appearing. Or at least I hope it is. Let me see if I could get better light. So, yes, I'm kind of going over that. But this will come on top of the black. We'll know where it's at because some of it will show through. I'm hoping. I'm hoping I don't obscure it completely. But same don't worry about ending directly where these end. It's just the impression and not the reality. So we need to keep going. I think these down here are the blue black. And sometimes to fill in, you'll, it'll, you'll make a couple strokes. And you notice there's the striations of colors in that exactly what you want. So I'm gonna go back. I just got the two blues on that one. And you can play around. You can do it in a different sequence. You can um, just make it your own. So I got a smidge, oh, that's the blue. That's okay. I want that feather. I don't want them all to evenly line up. So I'm gonna pull this feather a little bit further and maybe the next one. Now I've been alternating between um, dipping the dark side in the Prussian blue and the licorice. And that gives me some of the striations of color. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. That was looking empty in there. We'll give him a real tall tail. Alrighty, so there's a little bit. I'm looking at a picture that I have um, to kind of get the colorations correctly. So that underneath there has a bit, touch of black or dark color. So we're gonna let that dry. So let's go in here and we're gonna start adding the feathers all in here. and getting those lined up. And we're gonna do it the same way other than, I'm just gonna make chisel strokes. So you see how I'm doing this? And you're gonna layer them. Just because as it dries, because we have the different colors in there, it's gonna give it texture. And if you wanted to, you could just fill that body in and call it good. I just like to create a little bit of texture with my strokes. Chisel edge, again, I got a lot of paint in my brush. And you notice I went over the line over here, but it doesn't bother me. Because it's all good. We're going for an impression of a rooster, not reality. And this helps too. I just dipped in the black that time because I just had enough blue in here. So 
Okay, so we're getting his feathers on. And that Prussian blue and the black is really putting in the color. If you want to add just a touch of brightness, turn your brush to where the lighter blue is dragging behind the black or the darker color. It's usually the trailing color that is the predominant color when you're doing this. Not always. I mean, sometimes because your brush can get muddy with paint colors, it can um, be obscured. Now, um, the wing is actually the same color, but we want to have um, it be a little bit darker, but not a lot. So I'm going to clean up my brush where I don't have the lighter blue. And I'm just going to use the black and the Prussian blue. And I'm going to work that into my brush. I've got a little bit of extra moisture in my brush. And that will create a little bit darker wing than the body. So it kind of stands out, as well as we can bring some highlights along the edge. to um, differentiate the wing. Alrighty, now these, the very tips show black underneath. So depending on which way I want to go, sometimes I've been pulling the brush this way, sometimes this way. Like if I wanted a sharper feather, I pulled the brush that way so it gets it some sharp tips. So there we have it. And you can definitely tell that the wing is darker than the body. Now, um, we may come in later, probably will, and create even more texture and color in the body to give it some depth. But for now, that's our blacks on our rooster. We've painted his tail. We have painted around the tail, here's the tips. This part's golden here, so that we're gonna leave that to show up later. Now in my original practice piece, I had some teal or aqua in there to really brighten it up. Now we may bring that in later and do a little bit of highlights with that color so that he really just sparks some joy. So I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of this rooster painting tutorial in 10, 20, 30 minutes or less. And the next segment, we will come in, we'll touch up some of the goldens. We'll put in the goldens here and on the neck and probably put in another coat on the reds. Using today is yellow ochre, raw sienna, pure orange, and cardinal red. With the number 10 flat brush, we are going to do another coat on the comb and the wattle. Just give it a little more opacity since reds are still transparent. It just brightens it up a little bit. Please forgive the voiceover when I was doing this section of the painting. I did not have my microphone plugged in, but I will do the best we can and I'm sure you'll get the gist of everything that's going on. Just keep filling in, there's no Rhyme or reason, we're just filling it in to give it that extra coat of red. Don't worry if you go over the eye a little bit or anything else, we'll come in and fix those little details later. So rinse out your brush. get the red out of it. Now we're going to start in the lower section of his body. These feathers are underneath all of the other feathers, so we'll start with those. A little touch of brightness at the end. I was testing to see if the three-quarter inch brush would work, 
and changed my mind and decided to work with the number 12. You could do this with a number 10 flat as well if you prefer, but I went in with my number 12. So I rinsed my brush, tapped it out to dry it. So I'm putting some paper towels up here so you can see how I do that. I rinse my brush well, tap the extra moisture out, and then I go to load it. I'm loading with raw sienna and yellow ochre, 50-50, about even, and I work it into my brush so they blend together. Load it well, so you have plenty of paint in your brush without it being gloppy worked in there. Now we're going to lead with the yellow ochre and follow with the raw sienna. You notice how the yellow ochre is on the top? Now you can go upwards or you can brush downwards if you like. Either one will work. Don't worry about getting it perfectly opaque. We're going to go over this a couple times. So this time I'm going to flip the brush, follow with the yellow ochre, and lead with the raw sienna. And you notice the difference in the color. All we did was flip the brush, we didn't change the colors. So I'm working that in there. Don't worry about going over the wing. We're going to recoat the wing and go over these. We'll clean it up when we bring in the wing again. Forgive me, I have allergies. We're going to take some orange, pure orange, on the brush and work it in. It's on the raw sienna side of the brush. We didn't clean the brush. Just put the orange in there to bring in a touch of brightness. I want this to be bright. This is a vibrantly colored rooster. So I cleaned out my brush, testing to see if all the areas are dry and where I can go from here. Deciding on the colors. So I'm going with raw sienna and yellow ochre. And I'm going to do the brush strokes in the opposite direction. I'm going to pull down. That will leave the ends a little spikier. And I'm leading with the yellow and following with the raw sienna. And you see how that's working? I wanted the black to show underneath. We don't want to obscure those. Adding a touch of orange to bring in some brightness. Follow the curvature of those feathers. I'm all on the chisel edge of the brush. Yellow ochre, more raw sienna, touching the red just to give it a little more oomph. You notice how those colors really pull it up. It gives it a lot of texture. Don't worry about little spots showing through, we're going to work on those. I don't, I didn't clean my brush to do all that. I just kept adding. Oh, now I want to bring up the color a little more, a little more brightness of the yellow. This is school bus yellow, and I'm going to add it to my brush. Once I decide where I want that extra yellow. It's dried enough for us to go ahead and add a bit more color, but while we're waiting for to make sure, we're going to bring in some of his neck feathers, neck and chest. I guess that's kind of a top of his chest. Now I load with yellow ochre and raw sienna, and I'm going with the downward stroke again, leading with the yellow ochre, following with the raw sienna. Now my puddle of paint still has that red and orange in it, so it's bringing a bit of those tones in there as well. 
follow the curve of his neck. Don't worry about overlapping in areas like his wattle or the earlobe. We'll fix those later. Reload your brush. Keep stacking those strokes. Don't worry about being perfect. Just lay them in there. If you have to come back to fill in a little more later, that's fine. Reload with yellow ochre rossi and add a touch of the school bus yellow to the yellow side. We want to start bringing up that lightness with the yellow here. You see how that's bringing it in? Still on the chisel edge. All these feather strokes are on the chisel edge. See how that brightness really has a nice contrast with the lower feathers. So we're reloading. At the top, we're going to switch the direction, I do believe. Oh, we're still doing the little feathers underneath the earlobe. Ear lobe. So we just went into the yellow to really brighten it up. Didn't add any other color, just the yellow, or school bus yellow. Be careful not to overwork it. You don't want you want the striations of color. Now I'm bringing in a little darker color right at the crest, right where his head, his uh, feathers meet his wattle and head. Sorry about that. I will voice over the portion that I forgot to turn my microphone on for. So what I did was I'm dabbing my brush into the yellow ochre on the corner and loading it so I can put in his beak again and his legs. Just pull in his legs. Give him another coat. If you want to add a little bit of shadow on one side of his legs, just dip into the grassy and just bring it down. Wipe your brush and kind of blend it. Just kind of blends in there. And you can shadow the underside of his beak. And highlight maybe the top. Bring a bit of touch of highlight up there. Give it some dimension. So I'm going to put in the circle of his eye again where I kind of went over it with the red wattle and we are all good. Let me see what that's dry. So I'm going to go into where I kind of overlapped with the feathers on his wattle area. This is dry so I can touch it. I'm just going to recoat that and it's all good. So we're going to give his uh, comb a little highlight. My pure orange seems to be drying in here. So I just mixed a little bit of the pure orange with the cardinal red. And we're going to give it a spark here and there. Not too much. So that just adds some dimension and in his wattle too. Right along the front is like a clevis, cleft chin. Wiped out my brush, get some more red, kind of blend that in. All right. Okay, hopefully I wasn't watching. I didn't get my hand in your way. I sure hope. All right. Okay, so I think I want a little more depth into that black. I want it really dark in some sections. So I'm going to put some more licorice out while all these other sections are drying. And I'm just going to stick with my number 10 flat. 
and I'm going to load it with the black. So in areas, I'm just going to add a little touch more black, no blue, just to give it some depth. Now I'm starting the chisel edge, press, and then bring up to a point. Now I'm inside of that feather, meaning I'm not going outside of it. That just gives it a little more depth of color. And underneath it shadows that one. And then when it dries, we'll see how that has turned out and what we think. It gives it some areas of a deeper color. Alrighty, not liking the way that one's curving. I got a smidge out here. Let's see if I can clean that up. Take my damp brush and pull it up. One more try. There, we got it. All right. So that part's dry, this part's dry. I want this to have a little more depth of color. So I'm going to go into the yellow ochre and the raw sienna. I'm going to put a touch more red in there, touch of orange, and I'm going to just bring that in there. Okay, I'm liking that better. So it's got that in there. Now I want to touch more yellow. So I'm going to do the yellow ochre and the school bus yellow. I want that color to be bright. So first I'm going to see with the following, the color following is the yellow ochre. See if, if, if it's enough, yes. So there, we got that brought up. So we'll see how it looks when it dries and um, see if I need to tone it down any. I have a feeling when it dries, it's gonna tone itself down. Okay. So this one again was the yellow ochre and the raw sienna. And pull some more. This had didn't have it quite as vibrant as I wanted it. And I don't want to obscure all the black. There's some black under there. But I do want, let me see, I messed up where my colors were, so I need to reload. So let's do another layer. Nope, not correct. I think the yellow ochre side needs a touch of the school bus yellow. Touch more. Yes. And then school bus yellow, and I'm going to try just a school bus yellow and the red, see what we get. Oh, gorgeous, I want more yellow. So I'm taking out the red and just streaking in yellow. So there we go. Chisel edge, just streaked in some yellow. It's pretty thick in spots, so there's texture. So, oh, we are doing good. Now on here, I'm pretty happy with the tail, but I've got some white and yellow spikies right there. Just some short little pieces. So I need to get out some wicker white and not too much because just a few spikies, but I don't know if that's, oh, yep, it's dry enough. I'm just going to start slight because this is not very, it's like the white little fuzzy feather, so it's not completely opaque. Coming right up here, just some little spikes. I'm just doing the corner of the brush. Corner of the brush, working it in there, giving these little tufts of white, just barely. Rinse out, and then on top of that is some of the yellow ochre, 
with the raw sienna and a touch of the red. So let's see how that goes. I might even dab in a bit of the yellow because I want it to be bright. And you're just going on top of that white. And there's even a little spike up here. Just a touch. Okay. I'm going to step back. I'm going to look at it, decide what direction I want to go next. This is just not bright, as bright as I want it. Now remember, when we put our finish, our varnish on, it will brighten some of those colors because it makes it a bit shinier. But it's still, it's a little too dull for me. So I'll come in with some more yellows and another layer on those colors. So I took a quick look at my picture where I could really look at it instead of glancing over and coming back. And this portion is a little wider. It comes down over here. So I'm going to do that. Now remember, you don't have to be exact like you're drawing, but if there's a piece that's bugging you and you want to, you know, make it more like your reference piece, then do so. Just go in and do it. There. There we have it. Now I'm looking at these feathers here on his body. Now, remember, you can just have it solid. You don't have to do all these little steps, but I'm trying to put in some texture, interest, what have you. And it shows on my photo, it's like little scallops that are overlapping. So I'm going to do something similar. I've got the Prussian blue. This is the number 12 flat. Maybe I should do the 10. And I'm dipping just the corner in the black. So I have a bit of black with the Prussian blue. And then looking closely, it's just little U strokes. Little U strokes. And I should have started at the bottom. Silly me. Little U strokes. And then the black will show up. Just overlap them. No sense in being perfect. My hand in the way. It's so dark, it's hard to see on here. But when it dries, you'll be able to see, just like you can see the differentiation there, you'll be able to see those layers. And if you don't, then it's just a pretty element. Like I said, a lot of times I feel my way through a painting. There's no one way to do them. So, I wanted some depth of color into that wing. And it comes down, I've got it, and I'm just doing those same little scoop U strokes upside, no, that's not upside down, it is just a U stroke right there. It could have been smaller. Are you still with me? We're doing good. Now we'll go back over and do a little bit here because we're going to go over that and bring up or uh, deepen that color. And we can do that right now. Play it brown. You do not have to use the exact same colors I do. Get a feel for what you want your rooster to look like. So. There is no rhyme or reason. There's just you painting and enjoying the creative process. Now, I'm going upwards. You could also do it downwards, the stroke. So if I wanted to do it like this, that is perfectly acceptable. So 
that is all good. This is very coppery here. It's kind of like this color here. So, raw sienna, yellow ochre. I'm looking like I'm gonna have to get some yellow ochre out. And my paints are getting a little tacky. The feathers on this one are more rounded and not a little more coppery. So I'm gonna put some red in with that. And then the one's coming down over. Let me see, this one's real coppery. The black's really showing through. So I may need to go over that a couple times or just accept it the way it is. There's that option too. Now when I'm going over this lower one, I want to add a little more yellow. Get a little orange on that. My orange is really drying up. Yeah, that orange really does add that copper color I'm looking for. Now it's starting to lift the paint, so I need to give it a rest and let it dry some more before I do more because it's starting to lift it. So I'll let that dry and then I'll come in with a little bit lighter yellow. So I'm gonna go over this one one more time layers and layers of color. So I'm loaded with yellow ochre and raw sienna and I'm just going back over that and I'm leading with the yellow ochre following with the raw sienna. And if I want to get a little spark, make it a little more coppery, I'd pick up some orange. There we go. And now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get some more yellow ochre out. Let me see where it's at. Okay, right here, I'm pretty much out. I should say this bottle's pretty much empty. I need to get a new bottle. I got enough. But I am gonna get some more school bus yellow out because I'm gonna lighten this neck up on the other side. So let's get going with, I'm gonna go keep using some of the raw sienna and I'm gonna dip the yellow ochre side. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I will just go yellow ochre and raw and school bus yellow. There's still enough raw sienna on there. Now you could be a little more careful than I am. I don't mind cleaning up my messes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with straight school bus yellow. Put in some very bright yellow. And I should be building, like going up, not just going willy-nilly, but I have a tendency to get carried away. So there is his neck feathers. And I'm noticing that over here, there's a touch of white with the yellow. So I'm gonna put some white moon yellow and I'm just going to pull in some little feathers with a hint of white. And the same with right here. Okay, go in the cardinal red, clean up right here where his neck feathers came over. And I'm gonna be real careful with the white so I don't make it pink because I'm gonna go over his earlobe. 
and I'm dragging yellow in, but it's not the end of the world. Gives it a bit of texture there. Okay, we're heading for the tricky part, and that is his eye. I'm getting a tiny bit of white on the corner of my brush, and I'm going to put it in here, just here and here. And I need a good liner brush. So I'm going to get my liner brush and we are going to attempt, we are going to attempt to do his eyeball. So what I have here is the number 10 flat and I, the butt end right here. I dipped it into my paint and I created a dot and that's about the size I want. So I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to put it in the let in the middle of the yellow ochre round dot. And right there is that part. Wipe off your brush. I have a script liner, script liner, and I made some inky paint. Now I am terrible with these things. But I'm just going to show you how I do it. You're going to make a half circle line around the back side of his eye. Go right through that white. And it's not going down in there. Oh, probably the white diluted it. Now that was too much. So I'm going to pull it up. I'm showing you how I fudged through it because I'm terrible and I didn't want you to feel like you were the only one. And plus I'm trying to do this at a distance so I don't get my head in it in the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some red, go over that, before I fudge that up. And try again to line just around the outside of his eye. Um, the paint pens, if you have a real narrow tip, to me I have more control with a paint pen and you want to just use the tip and go around his eye like that. And I'm trying to look at his eye. Now this is the red here is just, I mean the white is just a little too stark. So I'm going to pull that up with the red and there it, it's brighter right there. So it kind of gives you an idea of his eye without being so stark. And if you need to go in and restate the yellow ochre, just be careful you don't drag any black into it. So that's basically his eye. I'm going to make this a little more elliptical. There. Instead of so round. Okay. So we've got that part. Now in my picture, in his tail feathers, there's actually a narrow yellow line that actually outlines portion of his tail. Just drag it. It doesn't have to be completely opaque. You see how it's, excuse me, put my arm in that. You see how it's skittering along the surface? That's fine. So I'm going to get some paint that's watered down, pull my brush through it, bring it to a tip. And then right through the center of this is a bit of a line. And the same with this. Next one. And then this one has a line right through the middle of it. Those details are optional if you're fine without those, but sometimes it just adds a little touch, a little hint of something. 
right here, there's a little bit of a highlight in my photo. And I'm just getting licorice, touch of white to make it gray. And I'm just going to pull that highlight right there on that portion of the wing. Give it a little dimension. And I think we have it. We could add a little bit of dimension to his waddle on the base. So I'm getting the red and just the tiniest hint of black. You could do this with a brown, etc. Work it out so it's not too stark and just bring a touch of shadow to the base of his waddle. There we go. And maybe we want to touch a highlight on the other side. So I'm loading with Cardinal, just a touch of yellow. That was just a touch too much. But we'll just bring that highlight over there, highlight there. Okay, we have a bright, colorful rooster. Now, again, totally optional. I kind of liked my little hints of aqua on my other. It was a little more than a hint, but on him, I am going to bring it in just because I think it's so pretty. So I'm just going to bring in a streak here, a streak there. This brings in a spark of color. My, I'm not keeping a chisel edge, so I need to wipe that out. Try that again. Much better. Yes, I am liking that. We have a very colorful rooster. I'm just working, blending those in at the top. Alrighty, there we have it now. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to keep messing with it, etc. because it's good. It's all good. And I hope you enjoyed painting the rooster. I am going to varnish it. I guess I could show you <clears throat> once this is completely dry. I'm going to let it dry for several hours. Now down here, it's optional. You could put straw. You can put fruit. You can put, I don't know what else. What else would you want? Grass. In fact, let's go ahead and let's put some grass. And we'll make him standing in a field of grass just so I've helped you finish this painting completely and not left you hanging. Thicket is one of my favorite greens. Oh, uh, let's see, that I use a lot of, so you should have it on hand if you've done any of my tutorials. I also do like citrus green, but I don't know if that's just a little too bright um, or not. So let's get the colors together and then we'll paint some grass. Okay, let's go ahead and finish him up with some grass just to give him something to stand in. Some green, green grass. We're going to start with some dark green first in the background. I was looking for my sap green. This is thicket. I was looking for my sap green, which I'm really liking that green now, and I couldn't find it. Goes to show you how disorganized I am right now in my studio. Life's been crazy. But we're going to just put in some thick blades of grass. This is going to be kind of in the background to the other and just willy-nilly different directions and it's real thick where his legs are so he's really in this tall tall grass. I'm just on the chisel edge of my brush and just pulling them up. Some are wider and that's just more pressure. Some are lighter. 
narrower, I should say, not lighter in color, but just can even overlap him somewhat. Some will go straight. You don't want them all the same length. Just vary the length, the width, crisscross over each other, obscure his legs where it's going. And that's the background grass. Now add classic green and lead with the thicket, follow with the classic green. So you're getting two colors in there. Then you can turn your brush and lead with the thicket too, if you wish. This is your grassy meadow. And then when you want to lighten it up, just go ahead and dip into the citrus. Lead with the classic. No, follow with the classic, sorry. And that gives you some lighter grass. And you can wipe out your brush. I just wiped my brush out. And just go into the, to the citrus and just bring in some real bright strands here and there. Highlight a strand up there. Then bring one across. You don't want it all going the same direction. Give it interest, make sure it's connected at the bottom, or go over it. Give it some brushes. Vary it, go back into the sit, um, thicket, and there you have it. Now your rooster is standing in grass. You can go to my poppy tutorial. You could go to any of my flower tutorials, daisies, etc., and put those in there if you want to. He's your rooster. So I hope you enjoyed this series on painting a rooster in 10, 20, or 30 minutes or less. Go ahead and send me some ideas of what you would like to see next on painting in 10, 20, 30 minutes or less.